Many years ago, insects were described as the little things that run the world because they're responsible for all sorts of really important activities, regulating the activity of herbivores, breaking down organic matter, pollinating crops. So insects do some really cool stuff. And on this farm, southeast of Melbourne, there's a project hoping to take advantage of some of that cool stuff. As the giant harvester crawls along the rows, plucking vegetables from the earth, among the leafy greens, other things, minuscule things, crawl and squirm and fly and bounce. Barely discernible to the human eye, epic battles are raging. It's the goodies, known as beneficials, versus the baddies, bugs that attack and damage crops. The main crop we grow are uh, leeks, uh, then we grow uh, cos lettuce and cos berg, uh, radicchio, kohlrabi and uh, Chinese cabbage. All something of a smorgasbord, especially to pests such as thrips and mites. And Darren Schroers is out to nail them without having to resort to insecticides. Every chemical I'm putting out is wiping out not just the, the pests but um, wiping out all these beneficial mites and thrips and other beneficial insects. Science has come to his aid. Darren is part of a nationwide trial that aims to encourage useful insects to control pest insects. So right now we grow a lot of monocultures in Australia, which is great, we want to feed a large population, but it's actually not great if you want to sustain beneficial insects, because beneficial or good bugs, they love diversity. They love a diverse meal to help them sustain their lives. So, Darren, this flower strip is looking really good. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's had been uh, well ir irrigated with the crop and we've given it a light fertilising too, so it's come up very well. I'm really excited to see what's going on. Yeah. Scientists from Charles Sturt University got him to plant rows of flowers next to his veggies, in this case, wombok or Chinese cabbage. The flowery field trial is both picturesque and deadly, a sort of insect ambush. The flowers, sweet alyssum, buckwheat and cornflower attract some very desirable bugs that make a meal of crop damaging insects and their larvae. Besides the common lady beetle, which you'll find in your backyard, there are lacewings, there are parasitoids, and also there are butterflies and beetles as well. So there's a great range that can be found out in the crops. But a really important question that we're trying to answer with this trial on your property, Darren, is just how far into the crop these beneficial insects will move. In nature, we quite rarely get serious outbreaks of pests and seeing the plants being devastated. And what we're doing in a system like this is trying to make the farm a little bit closer to nature and suppress the pests in a more natural fashion. Actually conserve the beneficial insects uh, and other arthropods that are in our agro ecosystems. And we're doing that through what we call habitat manipulation strategies. So this is the one, see this one? Oh, there's a lot of beneficials on this one. Exactly. Isn't there? So but first, the so scientists need to know who's here for dinner. It's no easy task to survey tiny, fast flying critters. But these sticky sheets catch a cross section. Absolutely. We've got a dragonfly here. Oh, yes. Then uh, that's a light lacewing here. If maybe some of these flower species might attract pest insects that we don't want to have. Yeah, OK. So are you getting beneficial insects on these traps? What, we're what seeing, sort? yeah. Darren, we're getting huge numbers of beneficial insects. So some of the more obvious ones are ladybird beetles, mm -hmm. parasitic wasps and lacewings. So we collect those um, after a period of time and we bring them back to the lab and we have a look at them and we identify um, what we're actually finding and, and also do some counts as well. Back in the lab, it turns out that the Schroes family vegetable farm has an impressive array of insects and arthropods, such as spiders. A lady beetle, for example, can eat several thousand aphids during its lifetime. Aphids, in this case about the size of a pinhead, are also a favourite food of lacewings. We found some great levels of brown lacewings, um, some ladybugs um, and some other, you know, really interesting uh, insects that we're yet to identify, including what looks to be quite a number of parasitic wasps. For sheer horror, the dining habits of these wasps take some beating. Where better to see them than the vast insect collection at Melbourne Museum? My favourite movie of all time, I think, is Alien. And you think about those aliens that parasitise a spaceman and lay their immatures inside 
and eventually you get the alien bursting out of the chest of the astronaut. Nature beat us to that sort of life cycle many, many years ago. And so we get these things that are called parasitoid wasps. So the female wasp will lay their egg inside a caterpillar or an aphid, and just the same thing happens. The immature parasitic wasp will develop inside this poor unfortunate pest, eventually killing it at some stage. And instead of the pest actually uh, emerging at the other end, we find the beneficial emerge. Um, and it is indeed quite ghoulish. So how does a farmer encourage these bug busters? The project has found that farm layout is crucial. Crops with a herbaceous border are less prone to pest attack. By providing them with shelter, with nectar, with pollen and with alternate prey sources. Right across Australia, where wasps are plentiful, the scientists found a common factor, native vegetation close to the crops. The beneficial insects were most numerous in parts of fields that were close to perennial native woodland. And not only were the beneficials more numerous, the pests were more scarce. That's one reason why this farm has tree lines that serve as shelter belts and habitat. And on top of that, we have lots of little tiny birds that come out and feed on moss. So um, this trial that they've, uh, the university have done on the farm, this will only enhance that. If we have a food source uh, for those predatory insects, that hopefully might increase their parasitism, egg laying, their eating tenfold. But trees take time and space, as do flowers. Growers don't want to give up valuable ground with flowers unless there are proven benefits. However, on the outer edges of the crop, in inter rows, that space is not being used. And by growing flowers, we found the benefits way outweigh any costs associated. So we are very keen to make sure it's economic for our growers. The project has already made some important discoveries. For instance, beneficials that feed on flowers grow stronger, live longer, and so eat far more pests over the course of their lifetime. The study also found that some vegetable crops shouldn't be planted next to each other. It's like a neon sign that says to pests, come and eat me. And not surprisingly, farms with high biodiversity have less pest problems because, of course, they support more beneficials. If you think about a lot of our natural systems out there, if we can get that um, equality again and we can get that balance back, then we can expect to see that we will get better pest control. Also, you can promote pollinators, which in many types of farming systems are really important, of course. So all sorts of benefits can flow if you can tweak the system in just the right way. And that sure appeals to Darren. I'm hoping we can cut our biological sprays down by even half. I, I don't know. It, it's early days. Um, if we can cut that down even more and have a cleaner product at the end, that'll be a, that'll be a bonus for sure. I'm seeing more and more of these uh, critters out in the field. Uh, knowing that they work 24-7, um, it, 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 that's a great feeling. It's, uh, yeah, it's terrific to see that.